All right, so at the end of the last video, I was saying how you don't need to be limited to only Google Image or Pixabay references to inspire your painting. And you don't need to be limited to just your photo reference. You can use AI to augment that, right? So if I put in a prompt, flying feathered serpent in the style of Salvador Dali into this program, Dream by Wombo, and I let it be guided just by my prompt, this is going to be a tattoo of it, right? I can also choose kind of a style that I think I'm more interested in, like simple design, anime, ink wash. I really like this cartoonist one from its older models. Yeah, that's not too helpful to me. And then you can put in a guiding image. I took in a, a painting by William de Kooning, who has some of the most beautiful kind of paint surface. And I would love to have that kind of quality to my digital paintings. It's funny because you can actually see this kind of implied grid in his work sometimes. So I'm going to steal that as inspiration. And in the same way, I can steal some of these as inspiration. Like this is really putting the, the surreal spin on it, all these swirling forms together. And I can download it. But what if I want to make that effect really strong and I change my prompt come on you just never know what you're gonna get but you could you could be informed by it you could use it in different ways so I want to take the dolly out of that prompt but for some reason it's not scrolling right now so let me reload all right. So let's take Salvador Dali out and let's put Jean-Michel Basquiat in. And then I'm going to call it a retro pop way of painting. And I'm going to put this vase of painted paper flowers in and then create. So if you have a strong, even normal, actually I really like that pot. I'm gonna have to save that just for saving it. But that's for a different project. <laughs> if you make it strong, it will pretty much just recreate the image that you've given it with a few modifications. But if you make it weak, then you're just kind of nudging its composition. So that's just pretty much a recreation, right? But if I make it weak, let's see what it gives me. So it's a way of, of getting interesting inspiration. Yeah, that's pretty interesting. And then I can take that one. I can add these all to my folder for inspiration. They're all in downloads. And then I just have a, a little bit more to work with. So instead of retro pop, let's try cartoonist. Now, these are not pixels I own. That's terrible. <laughs> or can use, but they can help me choose colors. They can help me understand composition. And I'm hoping that they'll help me loosen up. So I'm not trying to do anything too tight or too based on just one photo reference alone. So now let's get started. I've got lots of inspirations. I've got lots of tabs open. I'm going to close these down. Shouldn't have closed that one. All right. 
So, so far I have my inspirations, I have my photo reference, and now I've just added more inspirations using AI. I've got my paint surface, which is nine by 12 by 350 pixels per inch. Now it's time to kind of merge all these together. So my AI inspirations and my William de Kooning stuff, so this is the AI inspiration I liked most. I'm gonna put into the lower left-hand corner. And then let's do just one more. And I like this. I like how graphic it is, how chunky. And I lied. I'm going to do another one that I liked, which was this one. Now, my painting, the idea for my perfect painting of this, even if I had all the time in the world to do it, doesn't look like any of these but this will inspire inspire it that's my hope okay there are a few pro approaches we can start with just a shape painting which is what i'm going to demonstrate now which is this using big brushes just filling in shapes the other approach is to start with sketching and then building on top of that more line based at first but before i do that i have all these inspiration layers i'm going to merge those all together Select them all, and then Layer Merge Layers, Command-E. Then I'm going to lock them. I'm also going to lock the background so I can't accidentally paint on it. Now I'm going to create a layer that goes on top of both those layers. I'm going to call it just my Base Painting Layer. And this is Base Painting with Shapes. Shape Painting. Sometimes it's just called speed painting because you're not taking the time to draw it first. I'm going to grab a brush. I have a tablet. I'm going to make sure that that brush is pressure sensitive. And I'm just going to use the regular round brush. 100% hardness, size pretty big because it's pressure sensitive, but the opacity I'm going to take down to about 70. And I can hold down option and steal colors. And then just start painting. And I try to have a lot of energy and spontaneity. You see the pressure sensitivity of that brush. It helps these colors blend as I go. And by making using a tablet and making it pressure sensitive, it allows me to do thick and thin strokes just with the pressure I put on the stylus without having to change settings or change tools. So to me, a good digital painting practice is all about just staying on the, the paintbrush tool for as much of the process as you can. And how I'm, I'm getting colors is I'm using option just to steal colors from the inspirations and references I have within the file. So I'm trying to do this feathered serpent bird without any background. I'm just trying to figure out the composition right now. So this is a shape painting way to start it. And I'm not trying to make it really representational. I'm inspired by these more kind of offbeat ones. But I do want it to look like a bird. I might even decide to do a wing on the other side. even though that's not in my reference. And because it's on its own layer, I can go ahead and paint 
make it as big as I want and I can always increase my canvas. Your minimum is 8 by 10 by 300. As long as it's at least that big, you're meeting the requirements. Okay, now I'm at my first inflection point, right? I'm just trying to get the silhouette down. We've learned how important silhouette is. Instead of using the eraser, having to change to that tool and change those settings and change that brush, I'm just going to go to the lasso and I'm just going to cut away. It's like using a palette knife and just delete. Try to get a sense of the shape you want. Cut away from your different paint layers. Okay. Now I can take that base painting. I can move it so I have a little bit more room to paint. And I can always increase my canvas size. So I'll make it 12 by 14 inches. And I'll grow it from this corner. Right. Then I'm going to take my references and I'm just going to Option Command T. Oh, I'm going to unlock it first. Option Command T to make those references a little bit bigger. And maybe I'll use Shift and Option to spread them out a little bit because really I just need the colors. Then I'm going to unlock my background, fill it with white. And now this is what I call, um, actually I liked that color. I'm just going to fill it with that foreground color. Then I'm going to lock these and then move my base painting towards the middle and maybe even Option Command T, stretch it. This is the other thing I love about digital painting. You can't do a traditional painting. I'm not stuck with this. I can also warp it. Right click within and I can liven up this silhouette and this pose a little bit. Give it a little bit more gesture. So it really feels like this bird is flying. Lift that wing a little. Tilt that head. Right. So from this to this. And then I can get back to painting. Now why I like to have, usually I'll do it once I start refined painting, but why I like to have a background that's not just solid white, often I'll use middle gray, is so that I can see all the whites that I'm painting and build kind of my own contrast. This is all just one layer so far. But the first step is to really kind of block out what you see. Now, animals are more forgiving than portraits because we can't really tell when we get an animal's proportions a little off. But on portraits, we can tell. And we're pretty unforgiving when someone doesn't look like the person they're supposed to look like. So using warp, being able to adjust it, that's kind of a big deal in digital painting. And I did it a lot with the morning class where I am doing a, a portrait of a, of a human being. So don't be afraid to kind of mess with it just using Option Command T, free transform. Sometimes distort can help a lot. Kind of get you the pose that you want. I want it to be dynamic so I can kind of avoid that horizontal of the wings. And if I feel like I'm, I'm getting too little space for the top, I can always stretch it like that. And if I feel like the silhouette's not right, I just use my lasso and I cut it out. like scraping the, the canvas with a razor blade. 